so with the uh, polymath that it will be updated on the computers very soon um, actually so if you go to this website problemsolvingbook.com uh, this is one of the best books for just general chemical engineering just simple problems um, it's just a book full of problems and how they solve them with polymath excel and matlab so you go to this website problemsolvingbook.com these are the authors text click on this first link and you can actually download the educational version of polymath four months at 20 bucks right there unlimited use for 40 bucks so if you want to buy it put it on your own machine i guess if you it doesn't work for mac right yeah, I think it's a yeah .exe. Um, so all of these, so the, like the, the chapter headings, basic principles and cal of cal calculations, regression and correlation of data. So it goes through specific examples with Polymath, Excel, and MATLAB, um, and how they solved it. Uh, chapter eleven, chemical reaction engineering. Uh, there are a lot of examples uh, that might be useful, and I'm actually going to pull from this text um, specific examples and show them in class. Uh, and I'll pull the polymath and the MATLAB uh, from this site. Um, so here, uh, plug flow reactor with volume change during reaction. So DEQ, differential equation. So I can click on it, and this is all the argument inputs for polymath for this problem. Now I don't have the problem statement. I need the book for that. But I'll show you uh, a few of them next time when we go over ComSol as well. Um, now here if I have um, a half-life method for rate data analysis. Here is the half-life, temperature, and initial concentration. Uh, so this is an, uh, a case where you have experimental or uh, empirical values. Put them into a regression analysis and you can get all your kinetics you need. Um, again, book is pretty good. It even covers uh, dynamics and control. Uh, chapter 14 is biochemical engineering. So I'll actually pull a few of these polymath ones when we go over bioreactions and mechanisms. Um, and one of the coolest things is the appendix has uh, vapor pressure data for different compounds, just a bunch of um, databases uh, that you can pull from as well or create yourself. So when we open up Polymath, at the top here, there are four icons. You have uh, solve a system of linear equations, nonlinear equations, differential equations, and uh, regress and analyze data, so regression analysis. Um, if we take one of these, say our uh, differential equation uh, plug flow reactor with volume change during reaction. So these are specific values. I'm going to copy those over. Click this little solve system of ordinary differential equations and the blank area pops up. Now with this, here you can add a differential equation. You can add an explicit equation like rate constant equals 20. Um, now this will light up when you start putting in uh, differential equations. So say we have dn dv equal k times ca. So times is just the asterisk and of course all the mathematical operations are the same. So it needs an initial value. So our initial moles let's say is 10. And we can add a comment and I think it pops up with the pound sign. Yeah. So the pound sign, you can put units and stuff like that to keep track of everything. Just like in MATLAB, you have percent. percent. Right. So here, now that we put in a differential equation, you have this define initial and final values of the independent variables. So you can put your, your ranges um, in there.
So I'm going to paste in what we, what we took from here. So a plug flow reactor with volume change during reaction. So you can see that this differential equation, dx dv, is equal to k, our rate constant, times 1 minus x, divided by our v naught, our new naught, uh, initial flow rate, times 1 plus epsilon x, which is what we derived on the board earlier. Um, our k is 0.08. The initial flow is 10. It's probably liters per minute, something like that. Epsilon, in this case, is 2. Our initial uh, volume zero, initial conversion zero, and our final volume is 200. So variable volume, we need to specify initial and final values. So when we do that, and everything is defined and we're able to run it, this little uh, solve button pops up pink. And you can run, just like in MATLAB, different types of ODEs. If you have something stiff, uh, we run on RK40, or Rugged cut a method uh, four five four or five six you can do that, um, and so if we hit run, it'll give us this little printout, and x our variable for conversion, our maximum value is 0 0.6, which happens to be our final value as well. Like okay, so a table is really nice, but I want to I want a graph as well. So that that was the report. So if I click the table, the graph, and the report, run it again. Here is the report. Here's the plot. So we can see x as a function of volume. And here is the table as well. So if we go back to here, uh, this uh, Excel icon will export all this stuff to Excel, if you'd rather deal with it uh, in Microsoft um, Excel. And also, so say we delete our initial, or we delete K. Here we can see that this red X is undefined. You need to define K in order to solve the system. Okay? So now it's ready for solution. So it tells you if something's missing, so you know that if you have something that can actually solve or not. Um, and then the system of uh, linear uh, equations works the same way. Uh, Nonlinear equations, um, same way. Now regression analysis is a little different. So let's go find one of those. Uh, So differential method of rate data analysis in a batch reactor. So this is the data that they gave us. And with this, so we can copy this over, put it in our table, and we can specify, um, copy over. So here, our dependent variable, say, is concentration, independent variable, time. Now we can um, have it be uh, a polynomial fit uh, if, if we know the form that it should take. So if it's linear, we can so, so same thing, graph, report, uh, and we'll run that. And that is our. Um, concentration data, and our linear fit. Pretty bad. Mainly because I didn't know what the data would look like. So, scrap that. Let's say it's a second-order polynomial. Looking a bit better. But we can tell that it's definitely not a second-order polynomial, but it will also give you the statistics. Your R squared, your adjusted R squared um, variance, and uh, your variables, along with the model that's used to um, fit an equation to the data. 
so you can have multiple linear uh, ones and uh, nonlinear. Uh, this is where you would put in your own um, if you have it. Uh, you can specify a lot of things, um, integration or derivative. Uh, as some of these examples show, Oh, uh, differential method, integral method. Um, so you can kind of specify those as well. Any questions on this? I mean, the, the input arguments are straightforward. Um, yeah, if you have any problems, let me know. And has anybody looked up or used uh, Canvas to look at the textbook? Yeah, the Safari yeah. books. Like, yeah. um, so the companion site to Fogler has a ton of stuff on it. Um, that's actually where I pull the stuff that I write on the board because he already has it. It's simplified from his chapters. Um, but with that uh, is this polymath software, which uh, how do I get to it? So I just typed in um, Fogler 5th edition, and uh, this website will come up uh, in Google. What's the name of the website? Uh, the exact website, and I'll put it on Canvas, a uh, link on Canvas, uh, umich edu slash tilde elements slash 5e slash index. So Fogler teaches at the University of Michigan, obviously. But uh, he has uh, this software uh, link on here. So there's a lot here with Polymath, uh, Wolfram Alpha, MATLAB, Comsol, Excel, Aspen Plus. Um, in this little reactor lab, you can install, again, I don't know if it's for Max, but you can install these little modules to kind of help you step through some of the concepts. Uh, if somehow you have available time to actually mess around with the software that you make. We, I might pull from this Comsol stuff uh, next week. So uh, yeah, any of these software, I mean, definitely go to this site and just kind of see what's there. Fogler put a lot of stuff on here. Um, this uh, professional professional reference shelf. Um, these are a lot of industrial applications and um, professional engineering exam uh, problems. Uh, I was going to go through one tonight, but everybody was pretty glazed over with the derivations on the board, so I wasn't going to try it. Uh, well, maybe we'll start out next week with it. Um, now, different examples that show this and more importantly uh, it's all split out per chapter so you can see by chapter what the um, what the problems are what the material is uh, so if there's something that when you go through the textbook on the library's website or by hand uh, something that's just not making sense he probably has something on here that will kind of help it make sense and if not then you can always come to me too, and we'll make it make sense together. Um, so chapter four, stoichiometry. Um, so it has these different links for chapter four. So reactions with phase change. But we're not going to worry about phase change. Let's go back to... Yeah, we'll talk about it a bit. Um, trying to think of a way to do it without going completely back to thermal. I know there's a way, but just kind of how to how to present another view of looking at it. Because um, if you look at like oh, phase change is all thermal, and there, it, it, it's not. There's another way to look at it all the time. Um, 
with polymath, it really is as only it's as smart as its user. If you forget a multiplication sign or if you forget something, it won't tell you that you forgot it. MATLAB, when you go through a little bit of debugging, might tell you. You're gonna have to kind of go through very carefully in polymath to make sure that all those equations are correct. Like, kind of like asking the smallest deviation. Yeah, just like any process simulator. If you use the wrong thermal package, you're done because garbage in, garbage out kind of thing. Does anybody here use process simulators? For work? Okay, so you guys you know how. Okay. We got ChemCAD finally. So it's, it's, it's a lot better than it was like 10 years ago, but it's a lot like aspirin. Um, with that, we're going over a bunch of software in addition to so Polymath. Obviously, we went over in 15 minutes. Go over Comsol next week, and then we're going to go over ChemKin. Um, it's also owned by ANSYS, who owns Fluent, the computational fluid dynamics. Uh, it's really nice that they bought it because now you can take a kinetic mechanism, transfer it in to the fluid mechanics and fluent. We're not going to do that because this is not finite element analysis or anything like that. But we'll go over Kimkin and kind of how to use and model some mechanisms in 0D and 1D space. And I think we have the package to do that in ComSol as well. Let me check. Yeah, I have one.